Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to the workshop. Everybody loves cookies and they can be even more fun when you get to choose what shape they're in. Sometimes you can't find just the right shape of cookie cutter, so today we're going to see if we can make our very own cookie cutters using aluminum cans. These cookie cutters will be made using aluminum cans, a little bit of tape, and a little bit of hot glue. We also have a couple of tools that we're going to use to cut and shape the metal sheets. We have our cookie cutter making supplies. We've got some cookie dough to test it out on, so let's get started. To begin, I just want the flat sheets of aluminum that I can get from these cans. So I'm going to start by cutting off the top, cutting down the side, and then cutting off the bottom. I'm going to use the utility knife just to get the cut started, and then I'll switch to scissors. As you can see, it's an extremely ragged cut, but we'll smooth that out in a second. With our sheet of aluminum cut out, now let's try and get rid of the ragged edges. If you have any sort of straight edge you can use, that will help make sure your cuts are nice and clean and you have nice straight lines. That's much better. Got one side that's completely nice and straight, now I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> the blade was cutting into the metal at just a little bit of an angle and it sliced out this little spiral. If you prefer not to use the utility knife, you can also mark off where you want it to cut and then just use a pair of scissors. Cutting the metal with both the utility knife and the scissors could leave a sharp edge or some burrs that you could cut yourself on. So just to get rid of those really quick, let's take some extremely fine grit sandpaper and go over the edge of our can so we don't cut ourselves. There we go, now that we have our pieces of can cut out, the edges straightened and all of the sharp edges removed with some sandpaper, we're ready to start forming these into shapes to cut cookies. For the next step, let's cut off strips of the aluminum sheeting that are about one and a half inches wide. Go. Now we've got our strip. I'm just going to quickly use the sandpaper again on the newly cut edge. Now I'm just going to mark every half inch on this inch and a half wide piece. So we're dividing it into three equal portions. Now let's fold the top third down onto the second third. This will reinforce our cookie cutter and make it a little bit stronger as we shape it. Use the cap of my pen to sort of crease that down a little bit. There we go. We now have a strip of aluminum, which is sturdier on the top and nice and thin on the bottom. Let's make a few more of those. There we go, now we've got several strips of our cut and reinforced strips of aluminum. Now with the strips of metal, what we want to do is bend them into the shape that we want our cookies to be. I've got three different shapes here printed out and I want to try and make cookies that match these shapes. Let's start with this star shape. The goal is we're going to try to bend our aluminum sheets to follow along the line that we have printed out. Now, I don't know if this one sheet of metal is going to be long enough to get around the whole pattern, but the nice thing is that if you run out, you can take a second sheet and just nest it nicely into the first one. We'll then use a little bit of tape and a small dab of hot glue to secure the ends together. I'm just gonna use my pen and just mark the next spot where I want to bend it. That way I can take it off the paper, hold it in my hands as I do the bending. I'm gonna try bending it over my straight edge and see if that helps any. I think that makes a nice straight crease. One of the things you really wanna watch out for is that you need to make sure that your creases are perfectly perpendicular to the direction of your metal. If you accidentally make your fold at any sort of an angle, you'll have a very hard time getting the bottom of your cookie cutter to stay flat. You can see that this strip of aluminum has run out and I haven't quite finished making my cookie cutter shape. So I'm going to take another piece of the aluminum, attach it to this one, and then just continue along the pattern. I'm going to use a small dot of hot glue just here in the seam to hold it together nicely. Now to reinforce it just a little bit more to make sure it doesn't pull apart, I'm also going to use a little bit of this strong tape along the top. Just like that, we have extended the size of our aluminum strip by double. 
Now I've clearly got too much metal strip right now and I want to be able to line it up just right so it fits in here. So I'm first going to just give a rough cut right about there and then I'll line it more perfectly after I do that. There we go, we now have a nice star-shaped strip of metal. Now let's attach the ends here so it holds itself together well instead of flopping around. If you do end up joining pieces of metal together, check to make sure that the bottom is still nice and flush. If you have a little bit of a lip, like I do here, you can just trim that off with a pair of scissors. Now at this point we have a star-shaped piece of metal that we should be able to press down into some cookie dough and give us a star-shaped cookie. Let's try out the exact same process with a couple other shapes. Now with this shape, one piece of metal is pretty much the perfect size to go all the way around it, but I want to keep that point at the bottom of the heart shape. And since I don't want to just tape these two together, I'm actually just going to take a small piece of another strip of metal and fit it onto both of them so we can keep that nice taper. You do have to be careful while pressing this together because the aluminum conducts heat pretty well so it can heat up a lot if you're using a high temperature glue. These gloves are pretty thin, but they do stop my fingers from getting burned as I squeeze that together. All right, that looks nice and attached. Then just for reinforcement, I'll put a strip of tape on the outside. There we go. Nice heart shape. Got a slight curve in this one, so I'm just gonna try bending it around my pen. Looks like it's working pretty well. All right, that's working all right. We just need a little patch a couple inches long to fill this out. Fairly too long, of course. I'm just gonna do a rough cut. Let me measure better. So I'm gonna cut about right there. That, I think, is a pretty good speech bubble. test out your cookie cutters, make or buy some sugar cookie dough, prepare it as instructed, and then start cutting them out. We can get our shapes up onto our cookie sheet without them deforming too much. Flour. We're going to pretend this is a spatula too, not a cheese slicer. Ooh, flour helps. There we go, we've got our main cookie cutters, we've cut some cookies and we've got those baking. And while those are cooking, I actually went ahead to try and push the creative boundaries of how detailed of a cookie cutter you can make with this. So I have made a King of Random crown symbol cookie cutter. You uh, might notice there's a little bit less detail in this crown than in the original logo. I'm not gonna be able to get all of those tiny little details into a cookie anyway. However, to make sure I do have the little round points under the tip of the crown, I have this secondary little tube and I'm just gonna cut out a little circle at the top of each one. So let's roll out a little bit more cookie dough and see how well this thing works. Ooh, the crown is even just kind of lifting itself out. That's nice. Make sure all of the bits of the crown get pushed all the way down through the dough. Now let's take our little hole punch and 
cut out the tops of the crowns. Take off the extra dough and pop these into the oven. Our shapes have puffed up quite a bit. Our first batch of shaped cookies is out of the oven. I don't think this particular sugar cookie recipe is the very best for making custom shapes because they did kind of deform a little bit in the oven. And I know that's pretty natural for that to happen a little bit. These ones seemed to puddle and move around a little bit more than some. However, you can still see the shapes. We've got hearts, stars, and these little speech bubbles. And you know what? They taste pretty good too. I'm gonna take one of our speech bubble cookies and I'm gonna add some decorative frosting, which is one of the best parts of sugar cookies. Wow. That is yellow frosting. All right, spread some frosting on our speech bubble cookie here. Now I'm gonna take just a little bit of this frosting, add some different food coloring, and then pipe it out so we can have some speech in our speech bubble. Just gonna mix up a little bit of frosting here in this cup, add a few drops of blue, see if we can turn this yellow frosting into a dark green frosting. Got a little Ziploc bag, we're gonna use that for piping out our frosting onto our speech bubble. This is, of course, not a real authentic piping bag, but I think it's gonna work because we don't have all that much to write. Just cut off a tiny bit of the corner. Well, as I feared, we definitely did lose some definition in those crowns. Now it looks kind of more like a, a jellyfish inside a triangle, but that's all right. The cookie cutter works great. This particular cookie dough doesn't work amazingly. There you have it. We have taken some soda cans, cut them up into little strips of aluminum, and folded them and molded them into just the right shape so we can use them as custom cookie cutters. These things actually work really well. They cut through the dough very nicely just because you have a thin metal edge, so it's really easy to get right through, pick up a lot of detail, and then they cook and you've got your shaped cookies. This particular cookie dough does tend to deform a little bit, so you've got like a vague reminiscent shape of your cookies, but for the most part, this worked really well. I'm pretty happy with it. You can cut out your shapes, decorate them with frosting, write, draw, put sprinkles on them, whatever you want to do, however you like your cookies. That's the whole point, is fully customizing them. This project is a lot of fun, obviously it doesn't take many supplies, it's basically just some empty soda cans, and then you can make your own custom cookies. This is a great project that you should do at home, or at a friend's house, or, you know, wherever you make cookies. Grandma's house? Thanks guys for joining us for this project, and we look forward to the next one. Talk to you then. King of random cookie, with sort of a deformed crown shape in there. Sure, there's everyone out there on YouTube who has their own cooking and baking channel is just laughing at me for doing this completely the wrong way. Hey guys, thank you for your comments. So many of you have really interesting suggestions for projects and experiments, and we love testing those out for you. I also wanted to say thank you for the great feedback you're leaving for me and my team because we're all in this together. So thank you for being on our team.